Doctors have read it? What was a symptom a patient didn't mention that was really important? 16-year-old came in with blood pressure of 60-30. Pale as a ghost. Tons of free fluid in his abdomen on ultrasound. Turns out he had a metastatic testicular cancer that had eroded into his aorta and was bleeding into his belly. Come to find out later, he had testicle lumps and was too scared to tell anyone. I had a guy come to the hospital who told me he had seizures every Tuesday like clockwork. This is highly, highly unusual for somebody with a seizure disorder. It wasn't until I asked him about his social history that he told me he's a heavy drinker. I further investigated and it turns out he binge drinks Thursday, Friday, Saturday every week, then stops cold turkey. He was having withdrawal seizures. Black stools. Folks, if you're having black poops, for God's sake, mention that sooner rather than later. This lady had been seeing nothing but black for months before she thought to mention anything. We found several gastric ulcers and a hemoglobin level that circled the drain. Medical intern here. Had a woman come to ER complaining about stomach pain. Took her full history, did the exam and vitals. She seemed fine. Mild fever. Made a preliminary diagnosis of gastrointestinus and presented to my doctor. My doctor, who's female, goes to her and asks why she came to the ER for something so mild. She says because she noticed blood in her stool. The doc comes out and asks me if I asked about her stool. I did, and she said it was fine. And I asked specifically about blood. She goes back in and asks the patient why she didn't mention that to me, and her response, I didn't think it was appropriate to say it to a male intern. Turns out she had ulcerative colitis, needed a colonoscopy and long-term medical therapy and possibly surgery. Guys, when it comes to medical professionals, don't feel the need to be ashamed. I can almost guarantee they have seen or heard way worse than whatever you have to tell them. I had a patient whose main complaint was a wrist sprain. Asked how he fell and he said he felt lightheaded and fell down the stairs. After about 15 minutes of questions about his heart and other stuff, I asked him if he's had any vomiting. He said he vomits every day. I ask if it's red, and he says it's bright red every time. The kicker is, this was his usual yearly appointment. Dude was vomiting blood every day, and not only did not go to the ER, he didn't feel it was worth mentioning at his checkup. Chest pain. Guy denied ever having chest pain. Ever. Told us he was able to chop wood and work on his land without any issues. He didn't meet any criteria for additional workup prior to surgery. During his major surgery, he had a huge heart attack. A cardiac cath showed that he basically had one very narrow coronary artery that was the only thing getting blood to his heart. His daughters, who were nurses, all swore up and down that he was healthy as a horse and never complained of heart issues. Then his black sheep other daughter arrived and said he actually had told her that he has terrible exertional chest pain every time he did anything, but that he didn't want his daughters to know because they would worry. He died a few days later. If we had known about his symptoms, he would have likely had his cardiac disease diagnosed and treated prior to surgery. I had a patient who needed a small sterile procedure done but had a latex allergy, and it was in bright red all over her chart. We used paper charts back then. We had just ran out of latex-free sterile gloves. I went in to tell her she needed to come back in a week when we got them back. Then I decided to ask what happened when she came into contact with latex. Her response? I get chlamydia. I'm sorry. Wh what? What is this story? Is this woman serious? Did my sub eye on a level one trauma ED a few years ago as a fourth year med student. Homeless guy with hep B, hep C, and HIV came in talking about a rash on his shoulder. How it hurt, had been pretty hot out, and that that was where he was slinging his bag on. Looked okay, figured it was for a sweat rash, he was really in there for food, so was going to give him some cream and a sandwich and send him out the door. Was about to leave when I looked at his chief complaint again, and it also had testicular pain. So I asked him what was going on with his testicles. Lifts up the gown, and he is a tracking abscess through his scrotal skin and through one of his testicles. It was like a worm burrowing through an apple. Oh, I guess it's okay. Ended up calling urology and infectious disease. And the guy ended up leaving against medical advice because we were making him NPO, without food, in anticipation of surgery. I'm a med student. 
And on my family medicine rotation, I was sent to see this woman before the doctor and get a history and physical. She was saying she was having heartburn and just wanted us to give her something to throw up so she would feel better. I thought it was odd and so I went through some more review questions and she said her reflux pain was extending up the left side of her neck and down her left arm and that she'd been sweating for hours. I cut off my interview short there and went to my teaching doctor to tell him everything and what I thought. Got an EKG. Yeah, she was having a heart attack. Had to call an ambulance and get her to the ER. Had a guy who was sent in because his family was concerned about him, mainly because he was getting into a lot of physical altercations. Appointment with the patient was normal. He was able to talk himself out of most issues his family stated were occurring. And as we were ending, he said he had to pick up his other truck from the shop. I asked him, oh, you own two trucks? He replied, I own five trucks. The guy was military and only made 60 to 70k a year. Come to find out, he had bipolar disorder. And in his manic episodes, he would just take out a large loan to buy a new truck. He had almost 120 k in debt in just trucks. If it wasn't for that last part of him mentioning he was getting his truck, I would have sent him home and probably never known he had a psychiatric issue. Saw a patient during a follow-up for a gynecological cancer. She said she felt great. Exam was normal. She was relieved, but she was so anxious it set off my medical spider sense, so to speak. I decided to push a bit further, which led to this conversation. So, you said you felt good. Absolutely nothing else bothering you? Oh, you know, some small things. Nothing having anything to do with this. Well, why don't you tell me anyway? Well, I kind of have this weird lump on my belly. A sweat gland or greasy nodule or something. Doesn't really bother me, but I might get a dermatologist to have a look at it if it ever needs to be removed. Ah, I see. Could you show it to me? She showed me and I saw a skin metastasis, clear as day. Don't know how the story ended because I moved to different service immediately after. But if I had to guess, her life expectancy was probably measured in months. Admitted a baby my intern year that had transferred to our facility for persistent vomiting following a surgery on a part of the intestinal tract. The transferring facility had wanted us to start the baby on a form of intravenous nutrition and offhandedly mentioned some low-grade laboratory abnormalities that they had attributed to the baby just having had surgery. I go into the room in the middle of the night, the first representative of our medical team to meet the family, and in the process of gathering the history, ask the family what color the baby's poop was. The family replied that it was white or gray and had been since birth, and that they just thought that's how it should be. Record scratch. Big red flag. We ultimately diagnosed the baby with a rare genetic disorder that required an organ transplant. A few months ago, a woman, 36 years old, consulted to endocrinology because she was getting fat without a change in her diet and she felt different. Asking more questions, she casually mentioned she hadn't had her menstruation for months and that maybe she was menopausic. At 36, we suggested that she might be pregnant and she said it was a stupid idea and that she knew she was not pregnant. We did some analysis and ecography and yep. 35 weeks pregnant. You give birth at around 40. I was once rounding on a patient in the morning that had come in for a stroke. I decided to ask some basic review of the symptoms questions just out of habit. And when I asked about changes in vision, he said yes. I probed further and he told me that he was using eye drops for something, but that he forgot his eye drops at home three days ago when he came to the hospital. For the last three days, the vision in his left eye was worsening along with eye pain and pressure. When I called his pharmacy to see what drops he was using, as I suspected, they were for glaucoma and he was having worsening vision loss due to untreated glaucoma, increasing his intraocular pressure. We got an opathology consult stat. Medic here, ran a call to a general sick person call and arrived to find a slender lady in her 80s. She wasn't feeling well and her granddaughter finally called 911. We run through our assessment and aren't finding much to go on. And then, me. Anything happened recently? Like a fall or a trip or something like that? Well, I fell a few days ago and hit my head, but I wasn't feeling bad until a couple hours ago. Oh, okay. And you took all of your meds since the fall? What? Well, no, I didn't take them yesterday, just today. This morning, like usual? 
Well, no, I took them around two hours ago. Including the blood thinner? Oh, shnikes. Yelled to the other guys to grab the gurney. I didn't even need her to answer. I knew exactly what was happening the second she told me she took her meds right before she started feeling off. Subdural bleed. Didn't even matter how fast we drove. And we drove fast. She lost consciousness shortly after we got to the ER and probably never regained it. The blood thinner accelerated the bleed and she expired from it. It was such a terrible situation. Her granddaughter was really confused and scared at the sudden shift in our demeanor. It was such a large bleed and textbook case presentation that it was used as a case study for our quality improvement training. I'm an emergency medicine physician. I had an elderly gentleman come in because he fell in his kitchen, didn't lose consciousness or anything, didn't have any signs of trauma, but both eyes were slightly swollen, which he had said happened before the fall. Oh, and he forgot to tell me he also had a sore throat. He wouldn't have even brought it up if I hadn't asked why his voice sounded a little muffled. Took a close look at his throat. He had some pretty significant pharyngeal edema. He ended up having what's called angioedema, which explains the throat and eye swelling different from an allergic reaction. He ended up getting intubated and sedated and went to the ICU to protect his airway. He initially came in because of a completely inconsequential fall and got intubated and admitted to the ICU because of an, oh, by the way, doc, moment. Not a people doctor, but I worked as a vet tech for three years. Had a little tiny mini shih tzu in horrible health with a nasty attitude to match. You could seriously barely touch the dog, and she was very, very sick. The only reason we were able to do anything for her was because she was so small. The owner comes to visit her one afternoon and casually mentions to us that she's deaf. Poor thing was scared out of her mind and did remarkably better once we learned to let her know we were there before touching her. As a primary care doctor, we try to keep to our tight schedules. It can be difficult when patients could come in with something complex or with a shopping list of things that they want to talk about, and balancing this with providing good care and being mindful that the next patient will be waiting in 15 minutes for their appointment, we can be notorious for being late for these reasons. I saw a patient the other day who said she had a runny nose. I just got on with it, made sure she didn't have any signs of a more serious illness, and gave her some advice on what to do. After that, she also had a pain in her ankle she quickly wanted checked out. I couldn't find much wrong and assured her it would probably be okay in a couple days. Now her 15 minutes is up and I'm kind of gesturing her that we're finished. Then she pauses and says, okay, I just wanted to get those things checked out. The main reason I'm here is that I've been having chest pain all morning. God, I face palmed. I had a patient come in with a neck mass. There was enough off that he got the beginnings of a malignancy and infection workup that was remarkable for the mass being a hematoma. Then he remembered he was in a car accident and the seatbelt was where said mass was. I was discharging an elderly man in a wheelchair who had been treated for a urinary tract infection. At the end of the conversation, I suddenly realized, somewhat embarrassingly, that nothing in his papers told me why he was in a wheelchair. So I asked, why are you in a wheelchair? Because I can't walk, he answered. Well, uh, fine, but why can't you walk? I don't know. Okay, how long have you been in a wheelchair? Since I was admitted last Sunday. Okay... At some point, everybody in health experiences how difficult it can be to get information from patients. A good tip is to ask specific questions. So I followed up with, did you have any problems walking a month ago? Oh, no, no problems. I went for daily walks. At this point, I had to get up and do a neurological exam and found almost total loss of motoric and sensoric function in the lower extremities. Turns out he had a metastatic cancer compressing his spinal cord. And since he hadn't mentioned his quickly deteriorating legs, he had just been put in a wheelchair at admission with no further questions asked. As a kid, I was always out of breath and could hardly do any physical activity. When I would run or laugh hard or go up the stairs, my arms and legs would tingle. Thought I mentioned that to my parents a few times, but at the doctor, all that was ever said was I wasn't very active. Ended up passing out in gym class at age 8 and being diagnosed with a cardiovascular problem about a month before it would have killed me. The tingling and dizziness should have been a good clue. 
Not so much a symptom, but a medication missing from their health records that produce symptoms of poor bone grafting. In my dental office, and basically any dental office, we ask you to fill out a health history form and sign it. We'll again ask you at x-rays about any medications or health concerns. We will again ask you about what medications you're taking before any procedures. We will ask you again each and every time you visit the office, even if we just saw you yesterday as your last appointment. This man came in for several implants. This has multiple stages, which means multiple visits. We asked countless times upon each visit about his health records, health history, and medication. Nothing. Okay, that's great. But guess who had many failed implants, pain, and bone issues develop? Every implant failed. We only found out what the heck was going on when we were scratching our heads trying to understand why a healthy person was having bone problems, and asked him if it was fine for us to contact his physician, and from his physician, we found out about his medication and and made the connections right away. The medication he was on greatly prevents proper bone health. We would have changed our entire treatment plan if he had mentioned his medication he was taking. We even explained the treatment plan several times and asked if there were health problems so many times and he stated no health problems. At least if he had stated a health problem, we could have researched what medications are used for it and prevented issues. He required bone grafting and proper bone health is imperative. He spent thousands and then blamed us. He's forcing our doctor to do thousands of free work on damages because of his mistake. So much money, pain, and problems could have been prevented if this man just told us what damn pill he fed himself each night before bed. I'm an EMS worker, and one day my 62-year-old neighbor calls me up and tells me to bring my blood pressure thingy. She's a retired cop and one of the coolest people you'll ever hope to meet. She's also stubborn as a mule, so I'm thinking immediately that if she's asking me for a once-over, things are not swell. So I head up with my cuff and stethoscope and ask her what's up. She tells me she's felt off for a few days, dizzy at odd times and exhausted. I take her blood pressure as she's sitting in her chair, and it's very fairly normal, but she's still acting off. Her eyes are red rimmed, she's pale, and then I notice a bruise on her chin. I ask her about it. She tells me about getting up to go to the bathroom the night before and the last thing she recalled was walking back into her bedroom. She woke up later on the floor. In my world, that's just cause for a ride in our weep whoop mobile. But again, we're not dealing with your average little old lady. So I'm essentially now trying to convince her gently that she needs a doctor's opinion. I did a couple of quick tests to rule out a stroke, and she passed with flying colors. I do a postural, where someone goes from sitting to standing and you check their blood pressure to see if they're compensating, and she's down a solid 20 points points, but is of course playing it down as not a big deal. As we're negotiating, I tell her, look, you wouldn't call me up here for nothing, so we need to figure this out. Then it finally comes out. She's had dark and tarry stools and vomit. Well, that was the end of negotiation. Ambulance was called and she was rushed to the ER where she was immediately given a blood transfusion because of a massive GI bleed. I'm still surprised her blood pressure was within normal ranges both times, but I've chalked it up to the amount of vinegar she has in her. Guys, I had to say weep whoop mobile like 15 times because I couldn't say it without laughing. Nurse here had a man come in complaining of urinary retention, which could be because of his age. He left out the weakness and numbness in his legs that had been going on for almost a month during all of his assessments. These assessments were by both doctors, urologists, and nurses. He always denied any other symptoms besides urinary retention. He suddenly stopped being able to feel or move below his belly button. MRI of his back showed cancer into his spinal column and he died eight months later. So, triage nurse doing phone triage. Member had high blood pressure, 180 over 90, due to not taking blood pressure pills. This was not outside her unmedicated baseline. I asked if she was having shortness of breath or chest pain. She said no. Booked her a same day appointment after talking with her provider. She was having a heart attack with both chest pains and breathing issues when she came to her appointment. Don't lie, people, seriously. I don't understand why you would seek out medical attention and then not be honest about the symptoms that you're having. You're not doing yourself any favors. You clearly came here for a reason. Speak up.
exhaustion. Not just being really tired at the end of the day, but unable to function exhaustion. I would wake up in the morning and then two hours later need to take a nap that would sometimes last until three or five in the afternoon. I told my doctor and she ran blood tests, thinking it was my thyroid, but nothing came back abnormal. I was 29 years old. She kind of shrugged and figured it was hormones. A few months later, I noticed rectal bleeding, went back to the doctor to be told it was hemorrhoids and just waited out. Turns out it was stage 3 rectal cancer. I was cancer free for almost 3 years until it reappeared in my lung. Now I'm stage 4 and about to begin immunotherapy. I'm lucky because my disease is regulated to only a tiny spot and I have a rare mutation that qualifies me for immunotherapy, but it's still an absolutely terrifying situation. Feeling extremely tired all the time is one of the first notable symptoms of some cancers. Please don't let your doctors ignore it. Kind of tying back to what one of our previous posters said, unfortunately, yes, a lot of the times these doctors are on a tight schedule and need to get to their next patient as quickly as possible. It's not that they don't care or aren't looking close enough, it's just that they feel a lot of stress due to their time constraints. And especially with something like exhaustion, I feel like it's very easy to go unnoticed. We all have to be careful and keep an eye out for ourselves. If you feel like something is wrong, talk to your doctor. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot, linked in the description as well. Either way, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.